If you've ever felt like you want or need to be doing something, but can't seem to bring yourself to do so, or if you find yourself playing games way beyond the point of them actually still being fun, then this is the video for you. Because effort is fun. It really is when you look at it the right way. But sometimes the easier, low resistance path draws us in regardless. And after this video, Thanks to Kenma, hopefully you'll be a bit more excited about choosing the seemingly harder path. Because here's something I want you to think about quickly. Obviously, Kenma being a gamer, do you think if you got thrown into the final boss of a game, without the whole journey leading up to it, would it be anywhere near as meaningful? Would it be anywhere near as fun to fight or exciting to beat? In my experience, and as with all my videos, it's just my experience, Fun, as in real fun, not just passing time, kind of has to be earned, to be worked towards. And I think Kenma does a brilliant job of showing this. So our first introduction to him comes from Hinata getting lost on a training run, where we get quite the interesting contrast between our volleyball obsessed Hinata and Kenma who just doesn't really care about volleyball. Not in the same way as Tsukushima who kind of wants to love volleyball but just has issues to sort out, or Yamaguchi who had to build up a level of skill first to really start to enjoy it. Kenma just doesn't seem to care that much. We find out later on that his friend got him into it when he was younger and he just kind of carried on. I guess it just became part of his routine, you know. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have volleyball, or whatever days they're trained on. But in spite of his indifference towards it, he still gets frustrated when he loses. He always makes sure he finishes his training, and he still continues to turn up. And that's all very normal, honestly. That exact situation is something I'm sure a lot of us can relate to. Except we maybe enjoyed our weekly school club a little bit more than he does. For me, it was swimming and running, right? But especially when you're younger, you know, it's only in high school. It takes time to figure out exactly what it is you enjoy. And you have to give things a chance too. You know, if you're just jumping from one thing to the next because you don't enjoy it right away, you'll never really give anything enough time to see if you really like it or not. In a lot of anime and films and whatnot, the main character tries something once and instantly falls in love with it and does it for the rest of their life. And I think that's a big part of where this whole find your purpose deal comes from. But that's not always what happens in reality. You know, sometimes it takes a little while, so don't feel as though something isn't right for you just because you didn't enjoy it the first couple times. Although, by the sounds of it, he does actually quite like the sport itself, in particular the mental side of it but he gets put off by having to get out of breath and sweaty, which unfortunately for him, the team he is on, is infamous for making their matches twice as tiring and long as other teams due to their very solid defense and incredible teamwork, but quite average offense. His team does account for his lack of stamina and guts, with their exceptional receives, which they pinpoint his exact location, so he doesn't really have to move around. But regardless, it's worth pointing out that the enjoyment he gets from volleyball does come with some inevitable discomfort. It's again, pretty rare that you'll find anything that doesn't contain some aspect you don't like. Again, that doesn't mean it's not the right thing for you. And we see this in how as soon as he steps onto the court, he seems to be super level-headed and focused, which just isn't something you can do for something you have no interest in. As anyone who's ever tried to study for a subject, they really don't care about knows. He loves the mental side of the game, it's just the physical effort he doesn't particularly like. But following his conversation with Hinata, for seemingly the very first time, he's looking forward to the upcoming match, which I think is just purely due to Hinata's infectious, pure love of volleyball. The match rolls around and Nekama end up winning. Afterwards, when Hinata asks him how it felt to win, he responds with just sort of normal, which interestingly directly goes against Karu and Nekamata's concept of lowering the net that I really agree with. The summary is the first and most important thing is to teach someone how fun it is to succeed at something. So when he sees Kuru saying the nets are too high for him, he lowers it to enable him to do so. And I think this is absolutely true. A big part of enjoying anything is getting better at it. It's incredibly frustrating when you're trying something new and it's been a little while, but you've still not managed to do anything successfully. Where that joy of success 
when you do reach it is what makes it fun. I think Yamaguchi is the best example of this, admitting he didn't enjoy it in season 1 and later, after his mentor Shimada told him, you need to be strong to have fun and obviously getting stronger, he clearly greatly enjoys himself in season 2. Feeling skilled at something is a brilliant feeling, one which is well worth all the effort it takes to get there. But it doesn't really seem to be the case for Kenma. Given his frustration at losing, I imagine he does at least feel something when he wins. And again, if you really didn't care at all, I doubt he'd be able to focus on winning the way he does. But winning and getting strong hasn't unlocked any sort of love for volleyball. He just seems to want to play until the end of high school and leave it there. And you know what? That's absolutely fine. He's given it a real solid go. He never gave up with it. And he's found in the end it's just not really for him. Fine. But so many people feel as though they have nothing to do, but they're not willing to actually try things and figure out what they like. No one else is going to figure it out for you. You know, if you want to enter that awful feeling of just drifting through each day without anything that actually feels meaningful, you know, you go to bed and just have that uncomfortable feeling that you should have spent your day differently. The thing is, you can't just wait for it to fall in your lap. Your purpose as such probably isn't going to drop in your lap one day. It might do, but probably not. You have to try things out and sometimes that can be a bit scary or awkward and it doesn't quite feel right initially. But as you try more and more things, you'll start to get a sense for what you really enjoy and what you want your life to look like. It takes time. You know, it's only really in the last year or so I've started to somewhat figure out myself coming up to 25 in a few months. It's tough and I think that's a big part of why young guys in particular, very relevant to Kenma here, will simply spend all day playing video games. You know that part of the start about playing video games way beyond it being fun? I've mentioned this in a different video, but my routine before this channel was just playing games all day. I'd go to the gym, but that was the only other thing I would do. And to be honest, I didn't really enjoy it. I'd play a game for 10 hours when I stopped enjoying it after the first two. After four or five hours, I'd have this quiet frustration within me that wanted to be doing something else, but just didn't really know what. And the problem is, even if you do know what else you want to do, it's so much easier to load up a game than is to go and sign up for a sports club or learn to play an instrument or to start a YouTube channel. I don't know, that was it for me. And so there's a line which wasn't in the movie, but I think really sums up that whole side tangent I went on, which is sometimes the path that seems harder is actually easier. Or in this case, the path which seems less fun is actually more fun. Because I'm not bashing video games, right? I spend maybe five hours a week on a Minecraft server with me and my friends, right? But I promise you, the most fun you will have in your life is not video games, I promise you. And I always used to hate when I was younger and my parents told me to spend less time on the games and more time outside or whatever, because I always thought to myself, oh, but I enjoy doing this. But they were absolutely right. I really wish I'd started something like this channel or actually started the volleyball a month back. And if you don't know what else to do but want to try something, literally any sport is probably your best place to start looking. But that's a separate video, but as someone who really looks back and seriously regrets the amount of times I spent on video games, I hope at least one young man or woman decides to take up something that isn't gaming because of this. Anyway, back to Kemmer, although that was obviously all pretty relevant to him, because although he didn't find this match in particular any more exciting than the previous matches, he later on in Season 2 says to Hinata that he wants to play a match where it's instantly game over once someone loses. And the best explanation I've got for this is that he wants final boss Hinata rather than training Hinata, which is super interesting because he seems quite lazy to everyone else, but he really does love that challenge. He loves to be pushed to his limits, his mental ones at least. And in his words, beating a game is sadder than any game over. He'd rather lose than lack a challenge and it goes back to what I was saying before about just how much it sucks to feel like you have nothing to do every time you wake up. But now he does have a goal and it's later pointed out by his team 
that he's been considerably more motivated ever since. However, his showdown with Hinata will have to wait. Nekoma make it through to qualifiers and clear the first round. But in their second round, they end up against what's probably the worst team Kenma could have imagined for an opponent. A team just like Nekoma. Led by a former student of their own coach, Sarakawa Tech are another solid defensive team. Meaning this was going to be a stupidly long match. To make matters even worse, they're fully aware that Kenma's weakness is in his stamina. And so at the cost of the occasional rally, and even being willing to throw the first set, rather than going in for the kill every time, they'll often instead go for a hit that Kenma can just about receive, if he really goes for it. It doesn't take long for this to seriously wear him down, and he seems to hit the limit of his stamina. Nekoma begin to fall behind as a result, but in the final rally, he pushes himself to take that extra step putting up a beautiful set that catches everyone else off guard and allowing Nekoma to win the game. When his teammates ask him about it afterwards, he says it was partly due to wanting to pay his teammates back for the extra work they put in for him and also partly because he recognised that putting in that extra step was a lot less work than playing an extra set would be. Once again, it's that whole idea of what seems to be the harder path is often a lot easier. It was only a single step followed by a single jump, but to Kenma, being as exhausted as he was at the time, that was a huge deal. And then of course, moving on to Karasuno vs Nekoma. Now obviously if you haven't seen the Battle of the Garbage Dump movie yet, and still want to remain unspoiled for it, you're going to want to click off the video at this point. Thank you very much for stopping by though. Now, I'm actually going to skip for a pretty huge chunk of the match, just simply because I originally wrote the script going through it all, and I just felt myself repeating a lot of what I've already said. So, you know, the way he gets totally lost in a match whilst devising a plan to shut down Hinata, his disappointment when it works and it feels like he's beating the game, we've kind of gone through all of that already. But what I really want to focus on is how it all leads to one particularly intense rally. The rivalry between Hinata and Kenma has gotten increasingly intense throughout the match. And of course, the two players are polar opposites, with Hinata having all the stamina, athleticism, and above all passion that Kenma lacks, and Kenma having the brains and foresight that Hinata lacks. Of course, Hinata had steadily been developing his game sense for a while now. And in this rally, for the first time he pretends to dink, knowing Kenma would spot it, baiting him in forward before pushing the ball to the back. It's a level of forward planning and mind games we hadn't seen too much of from Hinata until now. You know, he'd had his receive where he used the path of Aaron to predict where I was going to go. But this really feels like a Kenma strategy. And likewise, when we look over at Kenma, who's collapsed on the floor after struggling to get himself back up, for the first time, he says, that was fun, much to Hinata's excitement. But that moment of joy didn't just come from one rally, or even this one match. It was the years of playing volleyball, building himself up and developing his skills up to put to the test against a very worthy rival, Hinata and the rest of Karasuno. And it's not the end of it either. In the final rally of the game, for the very first time, the quiet spoken Kenma not only yells at his teammates, but even insults him, completely ablaze with excitement, as he thinks to himself, I'm hurt, I'm exhausted, but I don't ever want this to end. Tanaka's line shot is received and goes high above Kenma, giving him a moment to briefly reflect on all their training matches together. But as the ball falls down, the sweat on it and his hands causes it to slip through his fingers. And I think that's as good a proof as any that he gave this match absolutely everything he had. And his complete lack of frustration or self-pity shows that he knew that too. For once, he doesn't seem to hate losing. And the next bit he says is something that's played in my head quite a bit since I first read it. It's easy to overcomplicate things or, I mean, maybe this next part is just me, but sometimes I feel like there's this pressure from somewhere, social media probably, I don't know. But sometimes it feels like there's this pressure that everything I do has to be part of some grand scheme or result in some grand accomplishment. You know, be something that I could show the world or anyone who asks and say, yup, look what I accomplished there. But something about Kemmer's closing speech here lifted a lot of that for me. No matter which of us lost or which of us won, 
No one was going to die. No one's coming back to life either. Evil won't flourish across the land. The world won't be destroyed. It isn't like we had a grand adventure across a sprawling fantasy world. We just ran in circles in a rectangle 18 meters wide, trying desperately hard to make a ball hit the floor in one spot and not another. And it was the most fun I've had in my life. Thanks for teaching me volleyball, Karu. I like it. Wow. That part I've said throughout about not feeling like you have anything to do. I'm sure there's at least a portion of you watching that. I actually do have an idea of what you want to do, but it doesn't feel important enough. And you should just throw that out of the window. You'll regret not doing so sooner. Anyway, to finish off, you might be thinking what I just said kind of contradicts the earlier parts about not playing video games all day. Now, if you genuinely do enjoy that and feel satisfied by it, then maybe that's a different story. But it seems to far more often than not simply be a substitute for not knowing what else to do. Of course, without going into spoilers, we do know Kenma continues to be a big gaming fan into adulthood. But the key part is, it's also not at all the only thing he's doing. He's clearly become a lot more willing to try some new things, see what he thinks about them, and stick with them until he becomes good at them. I also used to think that I had nothing else to do, and now I have way too many things that I want to do and I should try and narrow things down a bit. But once you do the same as Kenma, you realise that there's a huge, beautiful world out there for you. And the most fun you have in it will be a fun that you earn for yourself. Thank you very much for watching this far. A word is going to be a slightly controversial video, but again, everything I say here is just my own experience. So, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe if so, and I'll see you again soon.